migrants gathered near the Texas border told to remain in Mexico until American immigration officials can hear their case. How one family's story reflects the tough conditions so many are living with right now, waiting for asylum. The federal government sues Texas over its redistricting maps. Texas's 2021 redistricting plans were enacted through a rushed process with minimal opportunity for public comment. The lawsuit comes just three months before early voting begins in next year's primary. We look closer at the legal action and how it could affect when Texans get to vote. I am running to be the next governor of the state of Texas. A new face in the race for Texas governor, who may have a familiar voice. The critical moment that led this former journalist to quit her day job and how it landed her on your ballot. Produced from the Capitol in Austin and airing statewide, this is the award-winning State of Texas. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Maggie Glenn in for Josh Hinkle. The legal battles over the state's new redistricting plan reached a new level this week. Several groups had already filed voting rights lawsuits and now the Department of Justice is suing Texas over the maps. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland announced the federal lawsuit on Monday. The federal case claims the new boundaries for congressional and state house districts discriminate against the state's growing Latino and black populations. Texas's 2021 redistricting plans were enacted through a rushed process with minimal opportunity for public comment, without any expert testimony, and with an overall disregard for the massive minority population growth in Texas over the last decade. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton responded on social media. He called the lawsuit a preposterous attempt to sway democracy. Paxton said he's confident the legislature's redistricting decisions will be proven lawful. The Texas primary election is scheduled for March 1st. That will be the first time using the new voting lines, but the federal lawsuit could put that primary on hold. Sahara Rahman looks closer at the potential impact of the DOJ's challenge. U.S. Representative Lloyd Doggett is running for Texas's new congressional district, 37. This district is mainly the city of Austin, Westlake, and Rollingwood. It's the area he says he represented before past redistricting-related legislative and court actions changed his boundaries. Now the district I serve today stretches from north of uh, 183 and I-35 to the very south side of San Antonio. So often I find myself needing to be at events at both San Antonio and Austin at the same time. Doggett has challenged Texas's redistricting in the past and supports the U.S. Justice Department's new lawsuit, but he's concerned that might mean pausing the March primary. I hope that doesn't happen because it moves us off the traditional day and it usually means fewer people participate. The DOJ alleges the new maps for state and federal districts deny or dilute the votes of black and Latino Texans. The lawsuit asks the court to stop Texas from holding elections under under these maps and to make new ones. This is one of the important questions when it comes to these kinds of lawsuits, which is the timeliness of how uh, quickly you can get a federal judge to intervene. Political science professor Richard Pineda says changing maps will be a lot trickier once the primaries start. The state is making these changes and that's affected the U.S. congressional districts, but um, this has also affected municipalities that have redrawn lines for municipal seats like county commissioner districts and also city council seats. Tahira Rahman for State of Texas. States across the country redraw their voting lines every 10 years based on the U.S. Census results. Population growth affects how many seats each state gets in Congress. This map shows which states gained and lost seats. Most of them are in gray on the map. They saw no change. Uh, states in purple, like California, lost one seat in Congress. The states shaded in yellow gained one seat. And you can see that Texas here is the only state to gain two seats. Hispanic Texans accounted for most most of the state's growth in the past decade. Census figures now show the percentage of Texans who identify as Hispanic is almost equal to the percentage who identify as white. But when Texas lawmakers drew the voting lines in the special session, the results did not reflect those demographics. Of the state's 38 congressional districts, 23 have a majority of white voters. That means more than half of the voters in those districts identify as white. Seven districts have Hispanic voters in the majority. 
None of the Texas congressional districts have a majority of black voters. Eight districts have no majority, meaning no one group makes up more than half of the voting population. Lawsuits against the redistricting plan claim the Texas maps violate the Voting Rights Act. Many Texas lawmakers say that's not the case. Houston Republican Joan Huffman led the redistricting process in the Texas Senate during the special session. At the time, she said the process followed requirements of the Voting Rights Act. While these maps were drafted blind to race, it is wrong to say that race was wholly ignored in my end-to-end -end process. I am committed to giving due regard to all factors relevant to legal compliance, including compliance with Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. Congress and the Supreme Court have played roles in previous battles over election maps. In 1975, Congress amended the Voting Rights Act in a way subjecting Texas to preclearance. It required jurisdictions with a history of using discriminatory practices for elections to have any changes cleared with the Department of Justice or federal courts. In 2013, the Supreme Court effectively struck down preclearance. The justices ruled the law has done its job and jurisdiction no longer needed to approve changes with the feds. A provision of the Voting Rights Act remains where Texas and other places could be ordered back under preclearance if they continually draw maps in a discriminatory fashion. The race for Texas governor adds a new face who, for some, has a familiar voice. Big changes are doable, and big changes include everybody. That is my hope. The critical moment that led this former journalist to quit her day job to get on your ballot. Migrants gathered near the Texas border told to remain in Mexico until American immigration officials can hear their case. How one family's story reflects the tough conditions so many are living with right now, waiting for asylum.